Hey guys, it's Ali. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'll be telling you guys how I use my iPad Pro for school. This is it. I don't remember what edition it is, but it is the smaller size. And I also got the Apple Pencil 2 along with it and the keyboard folio thing. So I just took a look at the Apple website and the iPad version that I have is the first generation iPad Pro 11 inch and it turns out they're actually no longer selling it. They've already moved on to the second generation and you can tell because there's more cameras and this is sort of surprising because I just got mine like pretty recently and it didn't seem to me like it needed any upgrades but I mean I guess they came out with a new version and there's also a 12.9 inch one and that's already on its fourth generation. So I guess Apple is moving pretty fast through these and the version that I have they are no longer selling so... Yeah. I bought this during winter reading week, so I haven't had the chance to have like a whole semester writing notes fully on it yet, but I have been finding ways to implement it into my note taking slash studying slash my other design projects. So if I take off the case, this is how it looks like. I got the space gray one and it's super lightweight and thin. I always get asked if I think buying an iPad for school is a good investment, and I think this depends on your note taking style. So for example, if you really like handwriting notes, I know it can get really annoying just to have all your notebooks and all your sheets everywhere and disorganized. And then sometimes you might want to study for something, but then you realize you didn't bring your notebook and it's like, oh, what am I going to do now? An iPad lets you go paperless and it's a really good way to have all your stuff in one location. But if you don't really like handwriting and you prefer typing your notes, I think if you have a laptop already that already does the job, I don't think it's really necessary to go and buy one of these. This does have quite a hefty price tag associated with it. So I think it's important to like really consider if it's going to be worthwhile for you to make that investment. Also, I thought I'd mention that there's many different alternatives like lots of my friends use like this the windows surface laptops which like are laptops and then you can like flip over and write on it as a tablet but if you are looking for like those types of options there's already plenty of youtube videos out there on those so i'm not really gonna talk about that because i don't really know much about it and instead we're just gonna jump right on to what is on my ipad okay so if we open it up it's just my home screen I kept the background the same as when I first bought it just because one thing that I really wanted to make sure when I got this was that it would be like solely for productivity. So it's just for like taking notes, uh, making designs, and recording meeting minutes. It's not really for entertainment or anything like that. Um, if we look at the bottom of the screen to that bar there, I don't really know what it's called. Um, I have my messages, my calendar, Safari, Mail, an app called Procreate, and GoodNotes. And the three apps on the right are like your most recently used apps, so you can go back and tap on those instead of looking through all your apps to find them. So the first four apps are pretty self-explanatory, but I do have Procreate there just because it's like good for drawing. I want to learn some more techniques about digital art, so I have that saved at the bottom of the screen. And the other one is probably my most used app. It is GoodNotes. It is the app that I use to take my notes, to do practice tests, basically everything. Um, I really like it because you can import PDF documents into it and highlight on there. You can also make your own separate like documents or notebooks and take your notes like that that way. I got it pretty recently, so I haven't had like a full semester with it yet, which means that like I didn't want to completely change my note-taking methods that I already established in the first half of the semester. So this was more like, like used to complement the notes that I already had. Um, so I have different folders here, as you can see. Most of my stuff I put in classes, so Y1, S2 means Y1, I mean, year one, semester two. And then for some classes where I have more documents, I have put those in folders as well. So here is my chem notebook. And as you can see, I follow like a similar procedure that I use when I use my handwritten notes in my notebook. I made a separate video on how I take notes like here, so you guys can go check that out if you want. And the way that I take my notes is exactly the same as I did in that video. But one thing that is different is I don't need to like hand draw those diagram, which is like great. Instead, I just take a screenshot and then there's an option to import your image into the document and that's what I just do and it just makes things really simple and much faster than having to hand draw everything out yourself and um, I love digital notating because you can move stuff around one thing about like writing on paper is like once it's down you can't like add a point above it or like move some stuff around but here it's so easy to just move stuff around and it's very customizable which I really like so you can have different files open at once and here's also where I put my to-do list now I used to have an agenda but I realized that I didn't want to carry it around with me everywhere so I have a master to-do list on GoodNotes and I also use my calendar to time block my schedule another thing with GoodNotes is that you can import documents directly so um, I have all my past tests on here and this has been like a great way for me to get more practice doing questions before when I did past tests I would have my laptop open for the questions and I have my notebook on the side then I have like my calculator my pens and it just like took a lot of space but we only need this 
to do practice questions now. You can download the file directly into GoodNotes and then um, just write straight on the document and that just makes it so much simpler and faster. If you watched my other video, you would know that I really like to use quad paper and there's quad paper available on this. So that's what I always take my notes on. And in GoodNotes, I always like to use the ball pen and the smallest size for my writing. And my titles, I like to use the brush pen with the middle size to do like this sort of calligraphy kind of thing. Both Procreate and GoodNotes um, do cost money to download from the App Store, but it's only like $10. And I know people will be like, oh my god, $10, that's so much. But if you think about it, if you go to Starbucks twice, that's like $10 already. And I think that this investment is worth way more than two Starbucks drinks. So I would definitely like pay like even like $25 for this. Um, yeah, so GoodNotes is just like the hub for all my schoolwork. And if we look up, there's just like a lot of like pre-downloaded apps on there that I don't really use. Um, my photos app just has screenshots from like different lectures. Um, everything else up there I don't really use, but the bottom row I do use reminders on my phone, so it's nice to have that synced onto my iPad as well. Notes is one of my favorite apps just to jot stuff down um, that come to mind. It's like totally random, doesn't really need much organization, but um, it's also really great because you can share notes between other people with Apple devices. So my me and my friends are ever like bring to me ideas or want to share like key points with each other to keep each other updated. Notes is a great way to do that. Um, we got the weather network because God know how the weather is going to be like. Spotify. I love Spotify. I just got premium this year and it's great. Um, you can follow me. <laughs> when I study, I like to listen to my mellow playlist and yeah, I sort of just like put that in the background and then settings whatever then there's a folder called apple and it's just a bunch of apple um apps that i never use <laughs> moving on to the next page these apps I, I definitely use way more so top left is gmail so i actually have two email accounts one of them is more like my personal email and one's like business email so i have my business email linked to this gmail app at the top and then i have slack so slack if you don't know what it is it's basically like a messaging system that you can use for like different projects so yeah, I'm currently involved with a few projects that use Slack right now. Then there's also Facebook, and you might be like, wow, like Facebook is not a productivity app. But the main reason why I have Facebook is because a lot of university groups, whether that be like study groups or like groups posting opportunities, um, use Facebook. So that's like my, one of my main ways to like browse an opportunity and get updates on school stuff, but like by other students. So that's why I have that there. And then I also have Messenger. I have a lot of group, group chats for like projects and stuff on there as well. Um, then we have Google Drive, Google Docs, and Google Sheets. And one thing that I really wish would that like would be that like Google put all of these apps into one app because it's sort of annoying having to download like slides, sheets, docs, like all those like supplementary apps just to view my documents. But um, yeah, I love Google Drive. So then we have Reef. Reef is basically like iClicker. So like when uh, professors do polls during lectures that's how you can enter your response then we have quizlet which is like i don't really use it that often but it's a great productivity app so i kept it here anyways we have youtube studio um i mainly use this to respond to comments sometimes and also track my analytics occasionally we have sketchbook which i use for my youtube thumbnails duolingo which you can use to like learn another language but i haven't used it in a while um, i just keep it there though because it is another great tool that i can use if i do want to um get into learning more languages then we have calculator and I didn't know this but the iPad doesn't come with like a pre-downloaded calculator so I had to go to the app store and download one myself. Then we have a folder called design and if you click on it I don't actually know how to use um one two three four five five eighths of these apps. Um, I have them downloaded because normally these Adobe software is like cost money to have on your laptop but for your mobile devices there's often just like free versions that you can use. So the only ones that I really know how to use here are the first three Photoshop Fix, Studio, and Pocket Palette. Pocket palette, you can use it to come up with color palettes, and then you can just like click through to see like different hex information, which is great. And then Pantone Studio, basically what you do is you import an image and then little dots come up on the screen, and then you can drag it around to find the hex color code for that um, color. Photoshop Fix is sort of like a basic version of Photoshop, and you can use it to like remove stuff from images. And normally I use it on my phone rather than my iPad, but I still have it downloaded anyway because I thought it'd be useful. Then we have my Nike training app. This is what I follow along to do my workouts most of the time and it's great because it's compatible for iPad and this is like a bigger screen compared to the phone when you're working out. Then we have Instagram. You may be like, wow, Instagram's not that productive. But I'm actually managing social media for like two accounts right now. So this is how I access those social medias. I keep my personal social media on my phone and then these ones that I'm managing on my iPad um, just so I can keep them separate. 
So yeah, I have that here. And then I also have LinkedIn. I've been loving LinkedIn recently um, just because there's always like great posts that people make and yeah. And then we also have Trello. And if you haven't heard of Trello, it's basically like an app that you can use for your to-do list. So you can make different boards and make different to-do lists and like sub sub lists inside those to-do lists. And I'm currently using it for one of the projects I'm working on. Um, and it can be a collaborative platform or you can make it for yourself. So yeah, that is one thing that I'm using. Also gotta give a shout out to Microsoft Teams. I deleted it from my iPad because I thought I was done with it. But then a bunch of people want to use that as like a working platform instead of Slack. So now I have both. And that's a basic rundown on my iPad. I also forgot to mention there's like some cool features on here that I'm just discovering now. So one thing that I really like about my laptop is I can use like the three finger scroll to like swipe across windows. And you can actually do that on the iPad as well. If you use three or four fingers and you swipe, it can bring you back to the app that you were last on. And that way you can just like swipe through your apps like that instead of having to like scroll up and then find the application in the this screen. And another thing you can do here is when you have your notes open, you can pull up another app side by side, which I found really interesting. You can either choose to completely split screen your screen with one thing on one side and one thing on another. So that way if you're doing like research or something, you can have your document there and you're also your articles on the side. Or you can also pull up the tab so that like it lays on top of it. So yeah, I'm still playing around with this. I don't really know how to explain it, and I still get confused a bit about how it works, but I think it's really cool and can also help with productivity and instead of making you like swipe between screens all the time. My pencil is connected by Bluetooth and it just like attaches magnetically and charges by itself, which is really nice because I know the first generation pencil you have to like plug into the bottom and then it's just like awkwardly sticking out. But this is just like on the side, very nice and easy. I also have the smart keyboard and this is quite expensive. Um, originally I wasn't going to get it just because of the price, but it does have lots of functionality and I've actually been using it. The shift button on my laptop is currently broken and I can't really get it fixed because of like quarantine and stuff. So this has been a great way for me to like type out stuff um, because all the buttons are working fine. And it really speeds up the process in comparison to like pressing all the buttons on the screen. And it's also a great stand. If you've already bought an iPad and invested in the pencil, like that's already a big investment. So might as well make sure you can get like the best use out of the investment that you've already been made. Keep in mind that if you don't think you'll find this useful, there are many great alternatives that for cheaper prices on Amazon. The battery life for this it has been really good. It lasts me the entire day, but this I only charge when it needs to be charged. Yeah, the port is also USB-C, which is the same as my laptop. I don't know if it's bad to use your laptop charger for the iPad, so I just stick to the charger that they give me, which increases the amount of chargers I need to carry around, but I think it is totally worth it. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, make sure to give it a like, subscribe down below, and I'll see you all next week. Bye!